Okay, guys, well, we are all gathered out here uh, specifically today uh, because we are ce celebrating Memorial uh, Weekend, uh, Memorial Day tomorrow. How did you uh, check a little bit of that history? The first Memorial Day actually wasn't called that, but the first one was in 1868. Um, after the, the Civil War, they wanted to have a chance just to honor those who had fought, and so it's kind of nice for us to be here north and south together. Um, <laughs> We're celebrating that uh, together. Um, oh, whoever gets that sheet has to give that part of the message. So, all right. Cool. You're in trouble. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Cover that up. But um, actually, the day that we celebrate, uh, the last Monday of May, was put into law in uh, 1971. And so we've had a chance every year since then uh, to really honor those of... Uh, who really fought for us. The fact that we can sit out here in full freedom with absolute enjoyment of the life and the liberty that we have in the United States is because of those who have fought on our behalf. And this is our chance to remember them and to honor them. And so in, in light of that as well, I would really love for anyone here who's part of the armed services, either have served in the armed services or presently are doing that, would you go ahead and stand up so that we can give you a, a great... Uh, thank you. Thank you for loving uh, us by your faithful service uh, to our country. And so um, we're really honored to be able to just do that small token of our appreciation. Um, I know, too, uh, Memorial Day, uh, at least for me and I know many others, has kind of uh, spread a little bit farther. I think uh, it's also the day that many of us just remember those um, that we love uh, who have passed away as well. Um, I know... Grave sites all over the, the country will be visited. Um, you know, my mom, back in Michigan, I won't be able to do that today. Uh, but I know for Susie, who lost her father, and us, it's Memorial Day as well, and this weekend is just a chance of reflection on, on all of those that we, that we really love. And so I, I'd love, just be, before we start, because um, what I want to chat with us today um, is in light of remembering those um, who have been here, I want to talk to us today about heaven. Uh, I'm not just remembering the past, but I want to talk about the looking forward and what we can know about heaven. So let's just pray together and uh, let's, just, let's just ask God uh, to open our hearts to the reality of heaven and, to the, and just maybe to comfort those as well who this, this weekend are, are grieving the loss of the ones that we love. So let's pray together. Father, thank you for this, uh, for this day and for this chance to be together and to um, center our thoughts now around you. And I just want to thank you so much for the hope that we have in you and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And I just pray that today as we think about the hope that you've given us of eternity uh, beyond this life that we live, um, just ask you to give us uh, understanding. And, and I pray that it would encourage our hearts and that uh, maybe we would uh, walk away from here with a greater sense of, of what this life is about as we look towards uh, the future. So thank you, Lord, for each person. And I do pray that you just minister to every heart, knowing every time that we gather together that every person sitting here is loved deeply by you and cared for. And so I just pray they know that by the time we leave. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so when we talk about this whole idea of, of leaving this world and going on to the next one, um, do, you, do you know what happens? Do you know, do you know what happens when this life is over and we move in to the next one? Do you, do you know where you're going? Um, and are you confident of that? And um, Because when you're confident of something and when you really know something, it pretty much changes how you live your life. And as we're going to look at today, uh, God has revealed some things for us that he really wants us to know about uh, what happens when we're done here. 
And, uh, and that's what we want to talk about today. But, but the confidence piece, too. Because when you're not confident, that also affects uh, your life as well. Like, I'm not real confident of heights. Anybody else out there have a fear of heights? Okay, thank you. You know, and the, and the thing is, like, when I was a kid, my older brother and sister, we had this incredible climbing tree. Every year, we would go out as kids when the spring hit, and my older brother and sister would go climb the tree, and I'd sit there every year and go, I'm in! And then I'd get up to the tree, and I never did it. Ever. I'm 45 years old. I've still never climbed that dumb tree. <laughs> See, because when you're, when you're not confident, it hinders you, and you kind of hesitate a little bit instead of moving forward. I wouldn't ride roller coasters when I was a kid because they went up too high. You know, I, those are just things I, I was scared of. Um, another thing I was really scared of was sushi. Anybody else scared of sushi? Okay. <laughs> awesome. You know, that, I just was not real confident uh, uh, of, of putting some raw squid fish tentacle thing in my mouth. It just didn't seem like a really good thing. Um, you know what? I never had sushi until I moved to Salt Lake City. The sushi capital of the world, right? Isn't this where really great sushi is? Yeah. But, um, but seriously, I never had it until I was here. And I went to Tsunami Downtown Sugar House. Yeah, and I do. Now, how many sushi lovers do we have? Oh. Oh. See, now all you sushi fear people, you're realizing you're missing something, man. In fact, where's, uh, I saw him here. Where's Kevin Townsend? There he is, right here. So Kevin, actually, I, I, you know, because I'm doing like California rolls, you know, and all that kind of really risky. And he, uh, Kevin decided to educate me one time and took me downtown for lunch. And so he said, I said, okay, I'm willing to go another step in the sushi experience. And, uh, and I trusted him completely. And he ordered eel. Have you guys ever seen an eel? That is the scariest looking thing I've ever seen. And the thought that I was going to put that in my mouth was just sick and wrong. And I'll never forget, it was one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Because I'm, gonna, I'm putting the, this eel with the, you know, thing in my mouth and everything inside my head is going, this is going to be horrible! And everything in my tongue went, this is unbelievable! How many of you are eel lovers? Yeah. 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 You guys, this happens to us all the time. When we don't have confidence in something, um, we either hesitate, when otherwise we would go forward full force, or sometimes we don't even engage in it. Uh, because we just aren't real sure of something. Yeah, I mean, being an athlete, playing sports all my life, that was so critical. You can tell when a person has confidence when they're in a game. It, it totally affects your ability to play. And when you're hesitant or you think you're going to fail, because that's another thing where your fear, fear, fear of failure always inhibits us, and we never play at the top of our game. Well, I, I just when I think about this, do you know where you're going? And, and are you confident of this? Um, I might as well just pick on all the towns and I think about it. So where's Eric? I think I saw Eric. Is Eric here? There he is right over here. Well, no, that's not Eric. What you, what <laughs> there he is, way back there. So last year, um, uh, I wanted to take Susie backpacking for my anniversary. And uh, so I'm, you know, I'm thinking like all these peaks and all this kind of stuff. And I finally realized, I go, I have no idea where to go. And, and I could choose a place to hike, but I wouldn't be confident in it, right? And we just kind of do this. So I call up Eric and I said, dude, do you know any great places just to backpack romantic? And he's like, oh. He goes, absolutely. He gave me this list of them. And I, we ended up going to Sundial Peak. How many of you guys have been to Sundial Peak? What did I say? <laughs> All right, three of you. Hey, can I just tell you with all confidence, that place rocks. And once you've been there and you've seen the beauty and you've experienced it and you saw the view, See, once you've seen it, then I can come back and I can tell you guys, now this, with all confidence, is a place that you really want to go. And you want to take, you know, go through the effort, climb it, make it happen. When we talk about heaven, I, all of you have an idea. All of you have an idea of what heaven's like. Um, some people have died and say they've seen a light and they come back and they tell us some things about that. But we all have this idea of when I'm done here, I'm going to go someplace and I bet you, I don't know, the seat's 800, so there's maybe 600 of us, 700 of us here. We probably have about 700 different views. And um, what we need to do, you guys, to have confidence about what happens when we're done here, is actually see what somebody who's been there <laughs> says about it. 
And so Jesus Christ knew. He said, man, I know where I've come from. I know where I'm going. Over and over again, he said, I've been sent from there. He goes, You're, you guys have no idea. My kingdom, my rule is not even of this place. And so he wanted us to understand some things. And the guy we're going to read today, Paul, in 2 Corinthians, if you guys have been with us here this spring, we've been talking about living in two worlds. Well, one of the things we... Man, you talk about living in two worlds. Living here in this earthly existence, wondering what heaven's going to be like. we got to figure that piece out. And Paul was given specific revelations from Jesus Christ. And so what we want to do, man, is I want to look and see what these guys are saying to us about heaven. And that's what I want to look at today. So, because um, Paul's been trying to help us. He goes, I want to help you to know how to live. And once you know where you're going, you can have a whole lot more confidence here and now. And it'll change us. So here's what we're going to know. Now, obviously, there's a lot that we still don't know about heaven. Uh, you read the Bible. Some things are given to us. Some things aren't. And it, even now, it's, it's like a cloudy. We, can, we know some things, but there's some things we don't. And obviously, in this short time, I can't give you everything. But we're going through 2 Corinthians. And I'm going to share with you three things that Paul knew. He said, I have absolute confidence in this. And you can know this. About for you, about when we're done and we head into heaven. Here's the three things that we can know after we're done about eternal life. Number one, we will be in a new body. Anybody up for that? Yeah, sweet. That'll be awesome. Uh, We'll be in a new body. We will finally be home. That's the second thing you can know, is you'll finally be home. And the third thing you can know is you will be, I will be, we will be evaluated. So there you go. Those are the three things that you can know today that's going to happen once your time is over here. Okay, let's talk about the first one. We will be in a new body. Uh, I've asked uh, Brad and Brady are going to come out here. The first thing that Paul tries to help us to understand is he says our body is like a tent. This is uh, it's, uh, the verses I'm going to teach from in your program if you have that. 2 Corinthians 5.1 says, Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. All right? So one of the things that God is trying to help us understand about this body that you've got right here, he says the one that you have is like a tent. Now look at this beautiful tent. Hey, who's laughing at my tent? Uh, no, thanks, guys. Awesome. Here it is, baby. $10 garage sale special. You gotta love it right there. Um, but, but what he, you know what, now what's interesting, is what, so understand this, thought, this is going to be some funky stuff I'm going to share with you today, but we got to understand this about ourselves. God is saying that the body that you're in right now is like a tent. Now, this tent, it took me maybe five minutes to assemble, and I could get rid of it in probably about two. This thing is made for what? Yeah, it's, it's temporary, exactly. This thing was actually made to be dismantled. That's why this, that's what this is. God is saying, the body you've got right now, it's made to be temporary. And he goes, but what's going to happen is we have have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven that's not built by human hands. And see, this is one of those things, I'll be honest with you, for years as a Christian, I didn't really know. I mean, I sat there and I thought, man, I don't know. And it was kind of freaky because nobody, who wants to die and kind of float around in clouds and play, you know, and play harps and stuff. And it just... Ugh. You know, heaven sounded so boring. Who wanted to go? But one of the things God says is, your body right now was made to be dismantled, and when you die, it will be, and then you're going to get a new one, and it's a house. Right now, how many of you built a house to dismantle it? No, you don't do that. When you build your house, man, you build it solid, and it's rock, and it's eternal. So that's the first thing you can know about your body. Uh, the second thing that Paul says is, in verses 2 through 4, meanwhile... While we're down here, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. Because we, when we're clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we're in this tent, we groan and we're burdened. Because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. The second picture that Paul tries to give us. Now this is spiritual stuff. It's deeper teaching. So he's trying to help us to understand that. He goes, while we're down here, living this thing, we groan. And the word literally means, man, we long for something. We long for it. It's not like, oh, but it's a groaning. It's, 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 it's actually the term that's used for a woman who's given childbirth. It's groaning in the belief, I can't wait for this child to be born. It's the groaning of being a Detroit Lions fan. You long for the day 
when they'll win. It's that, that's the picture right there. Well, he says, and then he says, but what happens is when we're done here, he said, meanwhile, we groan and we're longing to be clothed. And that word literally means an overcoat. It means there's something better. There's something more that's going to come onto our being. Now, here's, and here's really important to understand, you guys, is who you are today in your essence is who you will be. And yet, you will have a new body that's clothed, that's taking on the essence of who you are. This is going to be important in just a minute. In other words, what you're doing right now on this earth is creating the character and the integrity and the person. And as we get to the evaluation, the, your existence in eternity is being built right now. Because the essence of who you are is happening. And then when we get to heaven, we get a new body and we're clothed with this, this thing that's awesome. Okay, so we're in overcoat and that is way too hot to keep on. All right. Third thing Paul says in verse 4, he says, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. This is so wild. So uh, I got a nice little apple here. I'm chewing it. But this word does not mean chew. doesn't mean spit it out. Aren't you guys glad? Okay. It means swallow. Our mortality is going to be swallowed up by life. In other words, all the pain and the struggle and the temporary things that you and I go through, when we die, Paul says what you can know is that your life, your mortality is going to be swallowed up by life. And here's what's so cool about that term, is when you swallow something, man, it's not there anymore. It is totally consumed into who you are. It's gone. Your mortality is going to be gone. Have any of you guys struggled with sickness and illness? Are you ready for that to be gone? Are you ready for this idea of anybody, you know, getting old? You know, it's, it's, I'm like, I have to stretch before I play golf? What's up with that? I it just, this idea of my mortality, the stuff that the fact is I'm, I'm here today, I could be gone tomorrow. That is going to be swallowed up, no longer an issue, by life. That is really cool. And that's one of the things you can know when we're done. And the last thing, it's not in 2 Corinthians, but it's in 1 Corinthians, but I wanted to, because he really goes off in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. He says, if someone may ask, well, how are the dead raised? And with what kind of body will they come? Well, how foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And when you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed. Okay? So in other words, if I want one of these trees in my backyard, I don't plant that tree. Right? What I do is I take a seed and I plant it, and when that seed dies... It can grow into that, which is just so freaky to me. I was going to try to get to a seed in here, but I can't. Is it not amazing, you guys, that inside a seed is one of those things? And what God is saying to us is, listen, when you die, it's like a seed. Your body is like a seed that gets planted. And the new body you're going to possess is something that much more glorious than what you've got right now. Now, is that unbelievable? Yeah, I mean, that is really cool. Now, what does that look like, you might ask? Nobody knows. I, I, one guy said, though, when someone has been sick, and you might say, man, their body is sick, and you can tell they're just not the person they used to be versus a person who's really healthy, okay? That, that might be what it is. Our bodies, are, 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 they're frail, they're temporary, they're mortal. And then someday, it's going to be something so glorious and so powerful and so amazing the best glimpse we got is when Jesus Christ himself was raised from the dead. And he came back down and everybody thought, man, is he a ghost? In fact, my daughter Mariah was asked at school this last week, actually, by a girl who believes in ghosts. And Mariah said, well, I don't believe in ghosts. And the girl said, well, what happens after you die then? What are you? What are you? Well, see, we're not ghosts. And we're not angels. And we're not spirits. We're who we are. And Jesus is our first example of that. And he came down and he said, listen, I know you guys think I'm a ghost, but what did he do? He said, give me some food 
And let me eat it and show you that this is a body. Go ahead, touch me. See that I'm not just a, an image. I'm a body. And this body was, uh, was glorious. And he says, someday your body is just going to be as glorious as his. I'm telling you, man, when we think of Memorial Day and all the people we love who we've lost, one of the coolest things is to know, man, we are going to experience something amazing. Even physically with a new body that's right, that's last, that's eternal forever. And that's a really good thing. Okay? So that's the first thing. What's going to happen after you die? We'll have a new body. Here's the second thing. What's going to happen after we die? We're going to be home. We're going to go home. Listen to 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8. There, Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we're at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. You guys, you know, right? Wizard of Oz, click your, click, I can't even do that. <laughs> click your things. I'd be in trouble. Um, because there's no place like home, right? There's no place like home. You go on vacation, you go to the most beautiful thing in the world, and you love it. And yet, for some reason, when you get home, you go, oh, sorry about that. Uh, you're just home. And there's no place like that. I, I just know some of you, sometimes you don't feel like you've ever been at home. One of the gracious gifts that God gave to me, grew up in Michigan my whole life. When I moved here, I'll never forget, we were driving on uh, 40 coming through Heber. And all of a sudden, I had this weirdest sensation come over me. And I didn't even know what it was. And about two days later, I finally realized what it was. I'm home. I, I, I have felt like Salt Lake has been my home more than my 30-some years in Michigan. And when you feel like you're home, that's a really, really cool thing. One of the things that Jesus knew is he had come from heaven and he was going there. And one of the things Paul said, he was, I'm confident of this. Someday, I'm going to be away from this body and I'm going to be home. The Bible tells us that we're actually citizens of heaven. You guys, it's like right now we're on a trip. We're on a journey, and it's going to be temporary, and then someday we're going to come home. And once we get home, we are there for good, in a glorious body, in a place with no more tiring, no more tears, no more pain. We're going to be in the presence of God. And that's why he says, so right now, we live by faith and not by sight. Because while I'm in this body, I'm away from the Lord. So I got to live by faith and not by sight. And that's what Paul did. He said, I know this. I am absolutely confident that someday I'm going home. See, when you know that, it changes how you live. Because you're like, you know what, man? I am not living for this world. I'm not going to get caught up in this. I'm not going to spend all my time and all my energy and all my resources and all this stuff that then will just be gone. <laughs> Jesus said it best, man. Store up your treasures in heaven. <laughs> Give your life to that because that's where you're going to spend eternity, which is way longer than our short time here. So that's the second thing we know we're going to be home. Here's the last one. We know that we'll be evaluated. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 through 10. Paul says, because I know I'm going home, and because I know I'm going to get a new body that's going to be with me for eternity, he says we make it our goal to please him, whether we're at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Now, I, I tell you, this is, I, I can teach for like a month on the stuff I'm giving you today. But one of the things that we need to understand here, because uh, very, very critical to understand, to enter into heaven, and we teach this all the time, you are saved by grace, through faith, not by works, so that nobody can boast. Now, is that good news? Yeah, that's really good news. Okay? I am not going to enter heaven because I did enough to be able to get there. You've got to know that, and you've got to believe that. But what we don't ever really teach is that even though those of us who are children of God, put our faith in Christ and are heading to heaven, us, everybody, we are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and we are going to get what's due us for the life we lived while we were here, whether good or bad. Now, if it's good, I, I'm telling you, see, this is the stuff, oh, it's just so deep, I just, ugh. I just wanted to dive in here with you guys. We will more, but what you need to understand is the life you're living right now is creating the person that you are going to be in heaven. Yes, we're going to be changed in an instant 
physically with a new body, with an eternal ability to live forever. But what God is saying is what you do here right now, you and I are going to have a chat when we get up into heaven. And everything that you've done, that not to gain entrance into heaven, you're there. But God's not done, you guys. Here's the key. We're going to keep living. We're going to keep living. Don't. That's what you've got to know. It's not like we live down here and then we get to heaven and then we float around. And just in what? You know, no. You will, you will go into this new existence and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And who you are today is creating what God wants to do with you for the future. See, so, so what you do now matters. How you live your life now matters. Because for eternity, God has plans that he wants to use you for. So if we're not doing stuff and we're not showing ourselves faithful, then when we get to heaven, God's going to go, okay, well, there's, there's, that, there's that part of you. And, and then I, and here's the point. I, I, sat, I read every co- pick commentary I could find and Google stuff. And you know what? Nobody really knows what that's going to be like. But we do know that God is saying, you're going to stand before me and I'm going to give you what's due you. What you did while you were here, I'm going to pay you back. And if you've done good, he's going to give you more. And I think if we've done bad, we're not going to rece- receive as much as we could. Now, I just opened up a big can of worms. But I want to tell you right now, the word of God just says that. I, I, let me read it to you again, just so it's not my opinion. We make it our goal to please him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. So you guys, here's what's cool about that. Then you know what? What you're doing right now, your life, the way you're parenting, the way you're loving your spouse, the way that you're working, the faithfulness that you're doing with your finances, the integrity that you have when you're alone, the way you treat people, the way you care for injustice, the way that you love those who are less fortunate, all of the stuff that you're doing right now, it's not for nothing. It's not for nothing. It's going to matter for eternity. And then you will get there and you'll have this new like Superman, I think we'll have S's on our chest or something, bodies, and we will have this ability to last forever. And we'll be at home. We'll finally not have to wonder if Jesus is there and live by faith. I love him now, even though I can't see him, as he says in Peter. I'm going to see him. I'm going to be at home with the Lord face to face. And that's going to be really good. And then I'm going to live. And so are you. We're going to continue on in the life that we are and the people that we are. And it's just going to be a place that's full of perfection and, and love and strength and beauty forever. There you go. That's what you can know about heaven, about eternal life, after we're done here on this one. So, Ben, why don't you guys come on up? And uh, we're going to play uh, a song that I know for my wife and I, for Susan and I, every time we hear this song, it just kind of brings tears to our eyes. And um, it's called When I Get Where I'm Going. You guys, you guys know that song? Okay, you must be a country fan, please. All right, here we go. But when I get where I'm going. Um, now, let me just share with you, there's some words in this song that are not true. One of the things he says, when I get where I'm going, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is spread my wings and fly. Okay, that's not going to happen, okay? Um, that's not part of the new body, as far as we can tell. Um, and then he says, um, or I might find out what it's like to ride a drop of rain. I, I don't think that's going to happen either. I don't think that... But... There's a lot to this song where he's dead on. Let me read you a few of the words that are true about when we get where we're going. Where we're going. He says, I'm going to land beside a lion, and I'm going to run my fingers through his mane. Now, if you guys know that Jesus is called the Lion of Judah. Now, how many of you guys are, um, uh, uh, that guy, C.S. Lewis is, uh, what? Narnia, thank you, like me. How many of you guys are a big Narnia fan? You know, I mean, Aslan the Lion. Yeah. That's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to land beside a lion. I'm going to run my fingers through his mane. Yeah, when I get where I'm going, there'll be only happy tears. I will shed these sins and struggles that I've carried for all these years. Is that good news or what, man? They're going to be gone. And then he says, and I'll leave my heart wide open, and I will love and have no fear. Can you imagine living with no fear? 
nothing inhibiting you but pure love. And then he says, I'm going to walk with my granddaddy and he'll match me step by step. Because guess what? Your old grandpa that you used to think you could take, he ain't you're going to be taking him anymore. Because he's going to have the same type of body you are. I mean, that's amazing. Then the dad, uh, Susie's dad who died from brain cancer, my mom who died from, for two and a half years just deteriorated before my eyes. She's got a new body. I mean, that's going to be so cool. And then the last thing, he says, um, so much pain and so much darkness in this world will stumble through. All these questions I can't answer, and there's so much work to do. But when I get where I'm going, and I see my maker's face, I'll stand forever in the light of his amazing grace. Now that is really true. So... Let me just pray for us, and let's just spend, we're going to spend a few minutes to close our service just with a heart of gratitude on Memorial Day that we can remember also what it's going to be like in our future. For God, let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for the hope of heaven. Thank you for the hope of eternity. Thank you for the things that we can know in the midst of all that we can't know. And God, I just pray that your spirit would come to encourage our hearts here today in our struggles and in our sin and in the... The, the people that we love, that we've lost, and everything. Help us remember that this is not our home. We are just passing through, and that we're going to be with you. And we're going to be with each other. Not because of any good thing that we've done, but we're going to stand forever in the light of your amazing grace. Jesus, we acknowledge you right now. You are the Savior. You are the one who has forgiven us of our sins. You are the gateway into heaven. It's not us, it's you. And we rejoice in that. And Lord, but I also pray right now that as we enter in this worship at the end of this time, that you'd also encourage us to live for you. To live, not like this is just our one shot. This is just the beginning of eternity. So help us to prepare and to be ready in Jesus' name. Amen.